NSU. Welcome back to Overtime, ladies and gentlemen. I'm your host, Mike Jersey, here with Dash Tag and Zach Attack in the studio. In the midst of the Manning Passing Academy, plenty of featured college quarterbacks were on Nichols' campus this past week. So let's talk a little bit about them. Uh, the two guys who were really, I guess, leading the class, if you will, uh, personally, I don't think either of them are the best quarterback that will be coming out this year. However, the two headlines are Heisman Trophy winner Johnny Menzel and two-time national champion A.J. McCarron. Well, as it started, he was there for the first one as well. But um, A.J. McCarron, quarterback for Bama, Johnny Menzel, a &M. So here's here's the question I got. We're talking NFL. Um, who do you think will have the better NFL career? Are you going with Johnny Football or A.J. McCarron? I've got to go with A.J. McCarron. Uh, the guy is just stereotypical pro-style quarterback. He's got a great arm. He's got a good head on his shoulders. Uh, he looks like he makes great, good reads. And he's played in big-time games against that LSU uh, game in the national championship two years ago. Uh, he really stepped up, and that was the first time we saw him play extremely well on a high level. And I just don't think Johnny Manziel is going to be able to keep up what he's got going for him right now over the years in a, against professional defenses. I think I'm going to have to agree with you. I think it's A.J. McCarron, which is you know hard for me to say coming from Texas. But um, I, I think the reason A.J. is better is because he's boring. He's not the flamboyant you know, go out and have fun and get in trouble quarterback. He's, the most exciting thing about him is his girlfriend. Uh, I mean, <laughs> and uh, I think, you know, he's kind of an Andrew Luck off the field quarterback, you know, on and off the field quarterback. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, he doesn't get in trouble. He makes smart decisions. He, maybe he doesn't make the crazy, you know, maybe, maybe he doesn't make ESPN top ten plays for – dodging a sack and throwing a crazy touchdown, but he makes the routine plays, he makes the smart decisions, and that's really what you want in the NFL. You can take risks with guys uh, that, that do the kind of things that uh, Manziel does, and, and maybe you end up with a Russell Wilson type of quarterback, a uh, you know some uh, shorter guy that can move, can move, make plays with his feet and his, uh, his arm, or maybe uh, he makes similar decisions to the decisions he's been making uh, in college and doesn't really grow up all the way. I think if if he grows up and becomes the mature quarterback that he needs to be and gets the right people in his life to tell him, look, you know, you, you, you've got a bright future ahead of you. You need to, to fix what you're doing off the field uh, and focus on your career and your future, then I think he could be a Russell Wilson type quarterback and maybe he is better than AJ. I, I think talent-wise, uh, Maybe I think he's the more talented quarterback. He's, he's smaller. He uh, you know maybe doesn't have the knowledge, but AJ's been there a little longer. But um, it really comes down to maturity, and that's why I give AJ the, the nod over Manziel because he, uh, by all you know the, the facts that we have in front of us, is the more mature, more uh, intelligent quarterback at this point. Now, you know, to me, I think it's a lot closer. Um, you know, AJ McCarron's coming out of a system in which uh, he's had great offensive line blocking for him. He's had a terrific running game. Now, in the same regard, Johnny Menzel really had a great left tackle last year in Luke Jokel and also had a solidified running game running that read option. But, you know, it, it's... I think at this point, though, it's tough to go against A.J. McCarron because, you know, earlier in his career, he was sort of that game manager. And Dash mentioned the national championship game against LSU. Instead of running the ball, Nick Saban decided to let his gun loose and throw the ball with A.J. McCarron. And he was making great throws on first down, putting his team in position. 
and really control the uh, entire tempo of that game offensively. And that's really where you saw him break out of that game manager shell or game manager perception. And last year, I mean, we're talking about a guy who completed 67% of his passes. It's an NFL rate right there. That's near the top of the league. You have a guy who threw 30 touchdowns and only threw three interceptions. Now, this wasn't him being a game manager. This was him making those 15 and outs, those tough throws that the NFL asks their quarterbacks to make. Um, those deep to intermediate routes on the sidelines, you know. And situational football, McCarron last year, I think, uh, aside from maybe David Ash, who was phenomenal on third down, uh, he was near the top in, as far as situational uh, football was concerned. But Johnny Manziel, I just think, um, like RG3, just has so much upside to him as far as ability. He can extend plays. He can run around and make things happen with his feet, which in today's NFL is big. Being able to move outside of the pocket, make those throws downfield, he can do that. Um, you see plenty of guys in the NFL who are able to do that. Ben Roethlisberger, Aaron Rodgers, Drew Brees sometimes. You don't see too many prototype pocket passers anymore uh, like Manning and Brady, who if you flush them outside the pocket, they can make a few plays here and there, but you can tell that they aren't as comfortable. Um, but, you know, I, I still feel like I have to go with A.J. McCarron uh, getting a slight edge, and again, some of that comes with off-the-field stuff. But now, Grant, I don't think Manziel's really a bad kid by any means. Um, I mean, got to talk a little bit with him at the Manning Passing Academy, and yeah, he likes to party. Uh, he, he's gotten into some skirmishes, um, put himself in some tight situations, but at the end of the day, I mean, I don't think he's a terrible kid, or he, it's not like he's out there, you know, going out there harming people or uh, being Aaron Hernandez. Yeah, you know, shooting the guy in the face six times, uh, mass murdering people. But, you know, hey, he's, like I said, had a little controversy, but I, I just, I don't see as it, see it as that big of a deal this year, or at least right now. Now, I think this year is going to be the telltale sign of what we right. get from Johnny Manziel. If he can make it through this season without getting into some significant trouble, I think the kid will be all right. Right, I, I agree with that. I think, you know, there's always players that have issues, whether it's drug issues or substance abuse issues or, you know, guys are always getting DUIs, and I'm not condoning that. I think that's horrible, and I think the, the NFL should put a stop to a lot of that, and I think they kind of turn a blind eye to some of that stuff. But, um, you know, it's, he's a 20-year-old kid. Uh, he's going to make immature decisions right now and that's why I agree with you I think this year is a big year because it's are you gonna mature over this year or are you gonna keep on the same path you're on and be satisfied with where you're at and say I can still do all these things off the field and perform top top notch on the field because that's that's really I, I don't think that's the case I think you know you have to be a mature individual to play to your full potential now Going away from Manziel and McCarron debate, the quarterback this year who I'm a huge fan of um, is Teddy Bridgewater of Louisville. Now, I'm reading up on him right now, and I think it's interesting. Uh, Florida safety last year, Matt Elam, um, who was a first-round prospect this year, he, um, he said that Bridgewater was the best quarterback he faced all last year. Now... It's not like this guy faced some scrub quarterbacks. I mean, he faced E.J. Manuel. He faced uh, Johnny Manziel, Tyler Bray, Aaron Murray. I mean, he he's faced a good number of solid pro potential quarterbacks. And he said Bridgewater stood out to him the most. Um, and against Florida in that bowl game, I mean, Bridgewater torched him. 20-33, 266 yards, and... Uh, two touchdowns, and he came, He did throw one interception and came on a tip pass, though. Um, but last year, as a sophomore, I mean, he completed nearly 69% of his passes, over 3,000 yards, 
and his touchdown to interception ratio was close to four to one. So he's he definitely put up those numbers last year, especially with the Louisville team and going in there beat Florida. I think he did a lot for his draft stock last year. Now, you know, let's talk a little bit about sleepers here uh, with this year's quarterback class. Me personally. I'm a huge fan of Brent Renner from North Carolina. Uh, he's a big, strong kid. And right now, I think he's sort of under the radar. Um, but there, I've been reading up a good bit on him. Uh, as I said, I mean, I saw him throw. Uh, got to interview him at the press conference. Just seems like a good dude. And uh, good head on his shoulders. Big kid. Solid arm. And... You know, he's 6'3", 215. Right now, he's projected to probably be mid-draft. But I think by the time draft rolls around next year, I think he's going to be a first-round projection. Yeah, and I think he's pretty good, actually. But uh, my guy, I think, to look out for is, I'm not sure if this really counts as a sleeper because I know he's a big name, but Jeff Driscoll out of Florida. Uh, he was the number one quarterback in the country coming out of high school. And he hasn't been doing great, or living up to his potential, I think, in Florida. He had a good season last year. Not a great season, a good season. And, I mean, Florida ended up beating LSU, and then they then they barely beat ULL on a blocked punt that shouldn't even happen. But I think this will be a big year for him. Uh, whether he does good or not will decide pretty much the, the path his career will take, and I think he'll, he'll step up to the challenge.